Hi, uh, we have seen in the first model how variograms can be one simple but efficient tool to summarize the scatter plots for different legs age. In fact, they give a simple but reliable image of the spatial pattern of the physical phenomena just based on sample data. Now, in this second model uh, of the special continuity analysis, we'll see how to calculate the experimental variograms with a limited set of sample data. Uh, in this second model of special continuity analysis, we'll see how to estimate the variograms, the experimental variograms. Let it, let's us see again the simple example of just one set of samples of one well. This one. And we saw we can summarize the similarity between all pairs of Z of X and Z of X plus H by several statistics as a function of distance H, like the coral grand. But we can calculate other measures of similarity which is the mean of the square of difference between z of x and z of x plus h for different h values. This one here. Yeah. This is called semi variogram or just variogram. Now we'll see a more practical way of direct calculation of variograms. Take again the case of our well where the samples are, are regularly spaced, this one, and we can directly compute the variogram values for h equal 1, which is the mean of all pairs, uh, all pairs of continuous values, this one. And this is, and, uh, this is the resulting variogram for h equal 1, this one here. We can do the exercise, the same exercise for h equal 2 h, or h equal 3 and represents them in the in h equals 2 or equal 3 and this is the variogram for h equal 2 and equal 3 and so on and we <coughs> and we can uh, represent them in the in this diagram a graphical representation of the variogram as we see, this is an increasing function with the distance here. The more correlated are the samples, the lowest is the variogram value. But the spatial patterns of the property Z of X must be explored in all directions. Hence, uh, the variogram must be calculated for each individual spatial direction, this one and so on. But in this case, we have irregularly spaced data, as you can see. Let us see how to handle this case of irregular spaced data. Take this is this 2D example of irregularly spaced soil sample data. Here, representing these 2D the values of soil samples. For example, if uh, we wish to compute the variograms of all pair of points in direction north-south, this one, okay, probably we'll not find any pair of values exactly in that direction. The same for other directions, of course. But if we define, for example, uh, the direction by a range of angle values, say north-south plus or less 10 degrees, we'll find more pair of samples that drop in this class of angles. Identical situation for the distances <coughs> h, variograms for h equal 100 meters or 150 meters, etc. We hardly find a pair of samples separated by exactly those 100 meters or 150 meters. But if, it, if we define classes of distance, say, h between 100 meters and 150 meters, another class of h between 150 and 200 and so on, we'll succeed to find pair of values of those classes. Okay? In short, 
Irregular space data implies that the variables must be calculated by classes of angles and classes of distances. Okay, let, uh, let us exemplify with the toy exercise. Uh, let's, let us see all pair of points covered by the class of angles, for example, 0 degrees plus or less 10 degrees. And this class of distance, 0 and 50 meters. We can find, for example, this pair of points here that just, just are included in those two classes of the direction and distances. And this one is as well. And this one, all of this. And based on those points, we can calculate the value gram for this client for this direction, class of directions, class of angles, and this class of distance. Take another <coughs> another class of distance, for example, same direction, different class of distances between 50 and 100 meters. And you can see this pair of points here. And also this one. This one, this one, okay. And the value gram will be calculated uh, for this direction, class of directions, class of angles, and this class of distances. Okay, now, for example, another direction with the different also class of distances and so on. So in short, the variograms are calculated by classes of angles and classes of distance such a way the main directions and distance are covered by the spatial continuity analysis. Here are some remarks about the experimental variograms calculation. For example, in presence of scarcity of data, the increase of uh, classes of angles or distances has usually one single and important purpose, this one, to obtain a more uh, statistical consistency of the average values uh, of the gram for the chosen direction and the distant age. A second remark. In an apparent isotropic spatial phenomena with a lack of data, it is uh, usual to calculate just one variogram for all directions. This is called omnidirectional variogram with a class of just one class of angles equal to 180 degrees, etc. Uh, note that uh, in this case we are missing eventually existing an isotropy of physical phenomena. But this is important. This is usually a good start for the variogram analysis by doing the omnidirectional variogram. Afterwards, we should go for the anisotropy directions if they exist. Another remark. Large tolerances of distance can lead to high values of variograms near the origin, losing, <coughs> sorry, Losing the perception of those details here, the most important part of the variograms, which is the behavior near the origin. So when we are large, the lag, we lose those details. And this is the most important, and this is the most important part of the variogram for the purpose of the spatial inference models that we will see afterwards. Now, let us see the spatial representativity of the variogram and how far we can go with this and sage. Take this example, of this very simple example of 16 samples regularly spaced in a row. If we calculate the variogram with the leg distance h equal 1, uh, we come up with one sample at the end with no pair. Uh, for example, h equal 2, we will get two samples with no pair, h equal 3, and let's see, h equal 8, and we get eight samples with no pair. In other words, the variogram was calculated with just 
those eight samples which are the, uh, represented here by the green area. In short, <coughs> as you can see, the spatial representativity of the value gram values decrease as the leg distance increases. In short, uh, as for the spatial representativity of the value gram, the values h should not be greater than approximately one one half of the dimension of the field a in the direction h. Of course, this is a rule of thumb. Just to finish the lecture, let us see other statistics that can also measure the spatial continuity of a physical phenomena. For example, non-centered covariance, which is the mean of the product of z of x and z of x plus h. Or the, uh, this is called also non-centered covariance. Or the centered covariance, which is the mean of the product, but normalized by the arithmetic means of the values located at x and x plus h. Or you can have uh, what you have already seen, the choral gram, which no else than the normalized centered covariance, normalized by those standard deviations here of the values located at, at x and at x plus h. We can easily also derive the, the mathematical relationship uh, between the variegram and the centered covariance. Uh, let us note that the covariance and uh, the choral are measures uh, of similarity, uh, decreasing functions, right? which means that they decrease as, as h increases. Variogram, on the other hand, is a measure of the similarity. The lower is the variogram, the highest is the correlation between uh, any pair of values separated by h. Here there are some books that I recommend for the topics approaching this lecture. The introductory book of Isaacs and Srivastavel, a book with uh, another one, a book with more advanced concepts, the one of Pierre Gouverts here, and the classical of André Journal, focus, more focused in mining applications. Or if you can read in Portuguese, you can have my book, Geostatística para as Ciências da Terra e do Ambiente.